Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zhi Guo. I'm here today to share with you more about the industrial and system engineering program. Uh, to get started, I would like to play a video about the program. Did you know that Singapore is the largest and busiest transshipment port in the world? Or that Singapore is ranked first for efficient healthcare? Although they may seem very different, both involve complex systems of systems whose success depends on how they are managed. This is where the methodical approach of industrial systems engineering comes in. First, we analyze the problem through data analysis and modeling. Then, we innovate solutions that integrate seamlessly. Third, we improve solutions through optimization techniques. And finally, we arrive at good decisions that optimally balances the gains and risks based on rigorous decision analysis. We have been training engineers in Singapore since 1969. We focus on combining a business mindset, modern management approaches, and multiple analytic skills to help organizations devise and implement ways to do things better. Our curriculum gives students great choice, breadth, and flexibility in charting their learning journey. For example, Students who wish to broaden their knowledge and skills in a complementary area can pursue a second major or even two minors across the different faculties and schools at NUS. As an IC student, you have access to a wide range of internship opportunities from finance to IT to engineering. Internships provide opportunities to learn skills that are impossible to learn in a classroom setting. In my internship with Shopee, I got to pick up important soft skills like project and stakeholder management. Going on exchange pushes you out of your comfort zone and broadens your perspective. IC students have a wide range of good schools to choose from around the world. In my case, I was fortunate to secure an exchange at Georgia Tech, which has the best industrial engineering program in the US. As an IEC student, you will undertake a real-world consulting project, providing you with genuine industrial experience and greatly enhancing your employability. This will build analytical, computing, and managerial skills that can be applied across multiple industries, including business and finance, digital technology, government and services, manufacturing, and supply chain and logistics. Did you know that Apple CEO Tim Cook is an industrial engineer by training? As we enter into Industry 4.0 and the digital economy, companies need individuals with IC skill sets to efficiently adopt and apply the proliferation of new technologies. Are you ready, ready to, to make, make the world better? better? To help you better understand what is industrial and system engineering, I would like to explain what do ISE people do. Unlike other engineering areas, uh, where you can actually see the system, the robotics, or the uh, buildings that you actually construct, the difficulty with system engineering is you often don't really see the uh, system uh, because it's the concept of system is often abstract and not something tangible you see over there. So loosely speaking, what is a system? A system is a set of things that are working together or interacting with each other. For example, we can have a logistic system where you have a warehouse of products to be delivered to different stores and factories, and you have the delivering trucks going around to pick up all the orders. And in this system, one of the problems that the system engineers might be interested to study is how to plan on the traveling route so that the total traveling distance for the delivery trucks can be minimized. And another example of system may be hospital, where you have the different healthcare professionals, the doctors, the nurses, and also the patients and the medical facilities. And one of the problems that ISE people study is how to optimize the appointment scheduling so that the queuing time for the patients can be minimized. And another example will be airports, where you can actually schedule uh, the different flights so that the delay or the waiting time or the customers can be minimized. And we are called industrial systems engineering 
because we are passionate in solving industry problems in a diverse range of industries. For example, logistics, uh, business, uh, technology, energy, healthcare, and so on. And at the end of the day, what value can I see people contribute to the industry? We focus a lot on the holistic view of the system rather than looking at individual parts separately. And because we adopt a holistic approach, or we call the system approach, to ensure that all components of the system work harmoniously to achieve a design goal. And if we just focus on one individual parts at a time, that may actually lead to a local optimization, which might negatively affect the overall performance of the organization. For example, if you are running a company, we want all the departments to work collectively towards a common goal, rather than each individual apartment work on their own goal, which might also compromise other departments' benefits. To give you a more in-depth understanding about the ISE framework, I'm going to introduce some of the tools and techniques that we train our students. Here I highlight four key areas, the data analytics, the system modeling, optimization, and management to help with my explanations. I'm not going to explain each one of the aspects one by one. Uh, first of all, let's look at data analytics. And in order for us to better understand the system, uh, we have to first have a good understanding about the problem. So that's where the data analytics come in. And our students are well trained with data analytics skills like machine learning, data visualization, and data mining. So after having a good understanding about the system, uh, we will further study and understand the system through some of the system modeling. That's where we train our students with the programming and the computational skills. And some of the modeling skills we use include uh, system dynamic modeling and simulations. And for example, we can actually build a digital twin of the airport system where we can test different potential interventions and policies. And because it's going to be time consuming and expensive to roll out the real system, so in a simulated environment, we can actually test all the possible interventions without bringing any potential interruptions to the current system. And as the system engineers, we are not satisfied with just coming up with one feasible solution. We are more interested to come up with the best solution or what we call the optimal solution. So most of the time, when we actually face with a problem, there are more than one options or more than one solutions. This is where our students are well trained uh, with the technical skills to identify the most optimal solution. And our students are equipped with expertise in management principles and uh, financial decision making skills. They apply them to complex projects and operations in multidisciplinary environments. And some of the courses and uh, trainings we provide to our students uh, include project management, uh, finance and cost analysis, uh, quality management, and so on. And at the end of the day, it's all about decision making. If you actually think about it, every one of us are making decisions every day, every moment, right? As individual, we need to decide what clothes to wear every day, uh, what should we eat. And as you are watching the video, you are going to decide which major you are going to choose. And as for the companies, they need to decide on the investment strategies. And ISE is really the science to help the company and the individuals to make a more informed and optimal decision. And the logic of our methodology is first to analyze the problem using some of the data analytic skills and then come up with a system model or simulation model. And from there, you propose some innovative solutions. And out of all the solutions, we try to identify the most optimized solution and then come to the decision making. And in order to achieve all this in a very rigorous uh, manner, we train our students with all these technical skills, including linear algebra, calculus, statistics, operations research, 
system design thinking and programming. As you can see, these techniques are not something that you can easily pick up. That's why our design of curriculum provide a very systematic training to make sure our undergraduates are graduated with all these skills uh, properly. And under the general ISE umbrella, the students may also wish to go a bit deeper in some of the specialized area. And the department offers uh, these three different specializations. For example, if you are interested to know more about supply chain, you can pick up some of the supply chain modeling courses, some of the manufacturing logistics courses, facility design and layout, revenue and pricing management. And secondly, we also have the analytics and decision intelligence specialization. This is where you get to learn more about the advanced machine learning models, uh, deep learning models. We also teach some of the most recent trends like the generative AIs, the chat GPT models. And this is where you pick up some of these skills. And lastly, we have the sustainability uh, specialization. I think everyone is trying to move to the carbon emission reduction. So this is going to become something very useful and commonly used in many industries. So you get to learn more about the carbon market models, the energy system of modeling and optimizations. And you also have the flexibilities to design and build your own degree. As you can see at the bottom, we have some of the common curriculums for all the CDE students. Then on top of that, you have the first major, which is uh, industrial and systems engineering. And beyond that, you get to choose uh, out of the three specializations. And some of our students are actually wants to explore a completely different field or a complementary subjects. For example, a lot of our students choose to take a second major in computer science or take a minor in economics and quantitative finance and so on. And what you see here is not the only possible combinations. In fact, the department is always happy to sit down with you to understand about your interests and discuss with you and come up with the suitable plan for each one of you. And apart from the normal lecture kind of uh, uh, class, uh, the department also offers students a lot of opportunities to get immersed with industrial experience. And one of the capstone projects that our students will work on is the system design project. And this is a course which uh, spans over two semesters. And you get to work with a team of four to five students. And you will be guided with one uh, industrial supervisor from the collaborating company and one academic supervisor from the department. And here I list out some of the collaborative uh, companies that we work with in the past. And of course, this is not all of them. Uh, due to the space limitation, I cannot list out all of them. If you are interested, feel free to scan the QR code. This is where you get to find out more about all the past uh, student projects that we have done. As you can see, the companies that we collaborate range from a very diverse range of industries. We have e-commerce, we have healthcare, we have manufacturing, we have semiconductor, we also have consulting and so on. And I think one of the issues that our undergrad students have is that not sure about what they want to do in the future. So here we provide a lot of industries for them to explore. So they get to experience those industries according to the interest. And a lot of our students identify their future career paths and future career interests through some of these industrial experience. And some of them even receive uh, job interview opportunities or even return offer after working with some of these companies. Another capstone project we offer is called the Independent Study Course. And this is for those who are interested to explore a bit more about the academic career. And let's say you are not sure about whether you are suitable for a future academic career. And this is an excellent opportunity for you to explore. And you get to work with one of the professors from the departments and one of the academic uh, projects. And you get to be guided from all the way from the start, identifying the topic, doing literature review, and coming up with the research methodology, 
and propose some of the model, do computational study, as well as do an academic presentation. And here you can see some of the topics of the projects that are proposed by our own students. For example, they study about the pricing strategy for the bike sharing system in Singapore, or they study about the electrical vehicle charging ports uh, design and uh, allocation in the Singapore uh, society. And our department also holds a center of excellence in modeling and simulation for next generation port. And the aim of the center is to become the leading research center in logistics, modeling, simulation, and optimization for the next generation port. And our department work very closely with the center, the professors, the research team, and the graduate students over there to craft out project topics and also internship opportunities for our students. So if you are interested in logistics, modeling and simulation, also the port management, I think we have a lot of fantastic opportunities for you. And this is just an overview of the sectors that our past ISE graduates work on. As you can see, a lot of them work in the finance and business areas, and a lot of them work in the government and service areas. And there are also quite a lot of them work in manufacturing and logistics, digital technologies, and many other areas. I think one of the good things about ISC is it can really give you a lot of potentials. Right? As you can see, if you are not sure about which career path to choose from, I think ISC has a lot of potentials. And we also provide the LinkedIn profiles of all our past alumni on our department website. So feel free to take a look and see whether some of their career paths might be of interest to you. So just to summarize my presentation, I think when it comes to the university experience, students normally look at these four aspects. Of course, the curriculum, the study, and then the industrial experience, because we don't want our students just to study, we want them to explore the industry as early as possible. So we offer all the different uh, capstone projects, internship opportunities. And apart from study, we also offer a very vibrant and rich student life. For example, we have this ISC club. It's the student organization managed by our own ISC undergrads. So they organize events, they organize workshops, they organize competitions. As you can see from the picture, they just organize one night cycling events after the final exam. And we also have an extensive collaborations with many top universities around the world. So if you actually join our departments, we actually have a lot of overseas exchange opportunities or summer school and winter school opportunities for you to explore. And feel free to scan the QR code or visit our department site, a website to find out more about us. On behalf of the departments, I would like to warmly welcome every one of you and really look forward to seeing some of you in the campus.